Hey friends, it's Amy Dab, the Keto Queen. I hope you're having a great day. It's Monday, my favorite day of the week, and I'm so excited to be home from work. We're making something new. It is actually a buffalo chicken meatball. And I was just telling Ricky as I was rolling some up, because I knew my hands were going to get disgusting and I wanted to be able to talk to you guys. As I was rolling up, I told Ricky, I said, dang, I did this all wrong. Next time I make these, I'm totally going to make a buffalo chicken muffin. And that way I can press down the center and then put my toppings inside the center. So this is the first time I'm cooking it and I already have ideas for a better way. But tonight we are rolling them out into meatballs and you can do them as big or as small as you want to. It is a chicken meatball. So it's a buffalo chicken meatball. I'm fixing to tell you what's inside this as I start getting my hands dirty again. So if you're watching, I'd love to know where you're watching from and what you're doing for dinner tonight that's low carb or keto friendly. We love to share ideas because guys, I've been doing this for five years. And like I just run across this and this is the first time I'm cooking this. I don't eat the same thing all the time. I do have my favorites that I absolutely rotate because my family requests them all the time and they're easy, so why not? But I also like to find new things. So when we share what we're doing for dinner, it makes us think like, God, I haven't done that in a long time. Like I personally have not done a fried egg burger. Ugh. I haven't done a fried egg burger in a long time. And I thought about this weekend because I love a fried egg over a burger. Like I love that and I haven't done it in forever. It's so good. So let us know what you're doing for dinner tonight that's low carb or keto friendly. I hope that didn't turn you off. I love fried eggs over a burger. It's so yummy. <laughs> you can get your best kind of cheese, like an over easy egg. Uh, yeah, put that over your hamburger that you've cooked and then let that egg pop. Ooh, it is so good, y'all. It is good. Now don't knock it until you try it. It's delicious. You can also put some bacon on there, maybe a little uh, piece of, uh, look, now you're making me hungry for a burger. <laughs> you can put a piece of uh, Canadian bacon on top of your hamburger with a little piece of bacon, like pork bacon, and then that fried egg over easy. So when you pop that egg, all the egg yolk comes out. Oh, y'all, I'm telling you, it's delicious. I may have to do that very soon. Uh, but tonight we're making a buffalo chicken meatball. <laughs> and we're going to make a side of roasted asparagus. The thing I love about these meatballs is I love a little buffalo seasoning. It doesn't have to be a lot. I'm actually going to tell you what I put in here. And I love blue cheese and I love ranch. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the meatballs. We're going to bake them in the oven on 350 for about 20 minutes, depending on how big you make your, your meatballs. And then we're going to put them together. I'm going to crumble up some blue cheese, put a little bit more possibly, depends on what they taste like, first time, a little bit more um, um, buffalo wing sauce. I'm using a buffalo wing sauce and definitely a little ranch. Doesn't that sound good? I love blue cheese and ranch. Oh, this sounds so good, delicious. So it looks pretty gross. <laughs> Honesty always, it looks pretty gross. It is ground chicken. So one of the things I always want to uh, give you advice on is making sure that you can do this without making a big mess. So I like to spray my hands with oil cooking spray or you can use just your avocado oil, but you definitely want to grease your hands. So as you're rolling these up, it just doesn't stick to you. And even then sometimes it can be pretty messy. So we are going to go ahead and start rolling these up. I've got my ingredients right here. So I'm gonna tell you what's in my mixture as I start to roll them up. And you can do them a bunch of different sizes, completely up to you guys. Like this one, oh, hang on, let me spray my hands. Just spray it. You wanna make sure they're greased really good. I took my ring off. Uh, make sure they're greased really good. Now this one is a pretty big meatball. That's one pretty big. If you want to make them all the exact same, you could use like a little two tablespoon scoop uh, or your cookie scoop or whatever you wanna use and make them all the exact same. I'm just winging it. I'm just put, picking up some, rolling it out, and putting it on my thing. If it looks like majorly big compared to the rest of them, I'll tear them apart in a minute. So we're just rolling this up. Let me tell you what's in my mix. I'm using two pounds of ground chicken. So it's just ground chicken. It's already prepped for me. I didn't, I didn't have to shred it and all that. It's just ground chicken in the package at the grocery store. And I use two tablespoons of fresh parsley. So like the little uh, herb parsley packets, I got two tablespoons of that. We did three tablespoons of ranch seasoning. Now, you guys know I love Flavor Guides ranch seasoning. So that's what I use. You can use whatever ranch you want. You can make your own if you like. I did a half a cup of cheddar and a half a cup of Parmesan shredded cheese. Okay, I did uh, one egg. I did uh, two teaspoons of garlic powder. Mm, a fourth cup of buffalo. So I did a fourth cup of the wing sauce, the buffalo wing sauce. Now there is a big difference between, you know, the sauces. So buffalo wing sauce is what I'm using. 
And I also sprayed my pan. I hope you guys saw that. I forgot to tell you. I sprayed this pan because these chicken meatballs can stick. So, like I said, I'm doing meatballs this time. But as soon as I started making these, I told Ricky, I said, man, I did this all wrong. I should have put these in my silicone muffins, my little silicone muffin liners, and pressed down the center, cooked it, and then added my blue cheese in the center cup, and then sprinkled with some ranch. Won't that be, wouldn't that be awesome? So I'm definitely doing it different already the next time. I already got it in my mind. I'm doing it different next time. But this recipe sounds delicious. So I'm going to go over it again. It's also in this post, guys. I've got two pounds of ground chicken. I did a half a cup of cheddar and a half a cup of Parmesan. One egg, two tablespoons of parsley. I did fresh parsley. I did three tablespoons of ranch. I personally am using Flavor Gods ranch, but you can use whatever ranch seasoning you want. It's ranch seasoning. Uh, I did a fourth cup of buffalo wing sauce and two teaspoons of garlic powder. And you'll see this is making quite a bit of meatballs. Ricky loves meatballs. So I don't think we'll have any problems eating this up. Now, ranch, I mean, chicken really is kind of messy to deal with. So I always spray my hands or oil them down, grease them down with your grease, your avocado grease, your avocado oil, olive oil, I don't care. Just make sure they're greased down so they don't stick. And just roll them out and put them on your baking sheet. I've got my oven on 350. I'm almost done. It's going to be a fast dinner. It's going to cook for like 20 minutes and then we're done. The asparagus is already in the oven. So when this is done, so is the asparagus. I got two more. But it is kind of messy to play with ground chicken or ground turkey. It just sticks really bad. So if you wanted this to be firmer, you could actually add some pork rinds as a filler instead of breadcrumbs. I decided just to use um, some grated Parmesan or shredded Parmesan, I'm sorry. It's not the canister Parmesan. I actually used shredded Parmesan this time. And I just kind of used that cheese as my filler. <clears throat> and they're holding up pretty good. This one's too small. Let me, let me steal from one of these. All right, I'm gonna steal from one of these. This one's pretty big. Now, if they are generally the same size, it's gonna cook much more even, of course. Um, so you can eyeball them if you want to. You can use a cookie scoop. That way they're all the exact same size, but I'm okay like this. All right, let me wash my hands. I'll be right back. So let me show you these meatballs. <clears throat> they look pretty good. I mean, whoops, they're gonna move around in that old grease uh, pan. I just washed my hands. <laughs> let, me use, let me use this fork to move them over. Now you wanna make sure there's space between them. If you're gonna cook them on a baking sheet, you wanna make sure they're not piled up on top of each other so they cook pretty even. The same size is always better because the thicker ones are gonna cook longer than the smaller ones. Mine are pretty much the same size. I mean, they're not perfect, but it's okay. It just took me less steps than having to scoop it out, but you can totally scoop it out if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven, and then I'm going to see if you guys have any questions for me. I was going to show you my ranch that I used. We got the blue cheese crumbles over here ready for the top. What we're going to do now is throw them in the oven for about 20 minutes. They're really chicken. It's ground chicken. It cooks really fast. Now, if you're making some giant balls, of course, you have to cook them longer, but 20 to 30 minutes is really all you need. Look, when they're done, I'm going to put them to the middle. I'm going to crumble up some blue cheese. I'm gonna pour on just a little bit of ranch or we'll do that on our plate, I don't know yet. Uh, but then I'll stick it back, I'm gonna do the blue cheese, stick it back in the oven just for a second, get that blue cheese really hot. And then we will, um, go ahead, and then we will uh, drizzle some ranch over the top, maybe even some more buffalo sauce, depending on how spicy they are. I will definitely taste mine first, but you don't have to do them spicy at all. Like I use a fourth cup of the buffalo wing sauce, but you can use a lot less than that if you wanted to. Let me stick this in, I'll be right back. Oh man. Let me show you my asparagus. It was in the oven already. I actually forgot about it. We're going to salt and pepper that asparagus real quick. Guys, roasted vegetables are seriously this easy. We just washed it, cut the ends off, heavily drizzled with avocado oil, salt and pepper. I may put some blue cheese crumbles on this too because we love blue cheese. 
Um, normally, I would just salt and pepper. That's really all you need. It makes the most awesome side dish, just roasted vegetables. You can do it with most every single vegetable. It's so easy. And when you're just looking for simple, fast, I mean, it's the best vegetable you can have. All right, let me put this back in the oven. move this over. Y'all seen enough of that dirty mess over there. Let me just tell you guys a little bit is planning surgery tomorrow. My little baby boy. Come here little bitty. Y'all he has gone the whole weekend without pooping. I feel so sorry for him and he doesn't even act like he doesn't feel good. Come here buddy. Come here. Oh not you Frankie Sue. You ain't still in the, you ain't still in the, the light Frankie Sue. She is. Look my baby's gonna have surgery tomorrow. That's the plan. He's got to go in the morning uh, to the to the surgeon. And they're going to do some blood work first, and hopefully everything is good so they can move forward with the surgery. Because, guys, I'm serious. We've been giving him laxative every day for weeks now because waiting on the surgery. They found a, a perineal hernia, and, like, I feel so sorry for him. He doesn't even act like he feels bad. Like, he's a trooper. Kids are so resilient. Puppy dogs are resilient, too. So, anyway, my baby boy, I'll pray for a little bit, my little bit bit, my, my booger bear, <laughs> my boogie, Walter. He's got so many names. Oh, Walter. <laughs> That's when he's tired and he walks really slow. We call him Walter when he won't listen. We're like, Walter, come on, let's go in the house. But this is my baby. That's my oldest one. He's going to be 13 this year. And I just hope that everything's going to be good because I'm, I'm really worried about him. So anyway, that's tomorrow morning. All right, buddy, go play. Go play, buddy. Go play. Frankie, leave him alone. <laughs> Frankie's rambunctious and a little bit old. Um, all right, let me scroll back to the top and see if you guys have any questions for me. I'm here to answer any questions you have. We've got 20 minutes for this to cook. Now, I do need to clean up a little bit, but it's okay. Ricky's here to help. <laughs> so, if you need me, I want to answer any questions. So, question, answer time. If you have any for me, put them in the comments. And I'd love to see what you guys are doing for dinner tonight. Need hamburger recipes. Ooh, Regina, I just love just a regular old hamburger with some bacon and cheese. I love that breakfast burger with uh, Canadian bacon and that fried egg. Ooh, it's so good. I'm going to have to make one of those really, really good. Uh, buffalo chicken meatballs. It sounds good, Karen says. Do ketones have collagen? No. Ketones are pure, ours are pure therapeutic ketones. There's nothing in there except pure pure uh, therapeutic ketones and a couple of vitamins. I love the ketones. They're amazing, but there is no collagen in there. Oh, no. Rosalie, did you figure it out? Uh... Oh, goodness, April, I hope you love the asparagus. Seriously, it's that easy. You just wash it, cut the big fat stem off the end, heavily drizzle with avocado oil or olive oil just so it doesn't stick, and that oil just really soaks in there. Oh, it's so good. And then just season it with salt and pepper. You can do garlic powder and other things, but salt and pepper is really all it needs. Now, Ricky likes his to be a little crunchy, so we actually roast them until the, the actual, I don't know if you call it a flower, the tree end. The tree end, when the tree end gets a little crunchy, that's the way Ricky likes it. So you can cook it for as long as you want, as little as you like, but that's the way we like it. And we love asparagus. It's one of Ricky's favorite things. Um, oh, Sharon, I didn't look. Let me count how many there are. <clears throat> Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Looks like 19 or 20. About 19 or 20, Sharon, but I cooked some big ones. I rolled them out pretty big. If you want to do smaller meatballs, it'll go a lot longer. Uh, hey, Barbara, how are you? Hey, Erica. What mayo is good with keto? Um, good question. I've really experienced a problem with my mayonnaise because I thought I had the best mayonnaise. And then when I read the ingredients a little while ago, a couple of days ago, it actually was not the way it used to be. They added an ingredient. So this is my advice, Erica be perfectly honest, and this is what I do when I go to the grocery store. When I go to the grocery store, let me find you something as an example. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Here's my mayonnaise, for example. So when I go to the grocery store, this is how I shop. When I go to the grocery store and I look at products that are in a package, whether it's a box or a jar or a spray can, like any product that's packaged, now, I like to teach as clean eating as possible because that is what's most healthiest for us. So, your protein, lean vegetables, cooked in healthy fats, like tonight, is pretty great. 
but if you want to use mayonnaise or, you know, I love the cheese wraps, like the cheese it like the little crisps, uh, dipping sauces for your protein. Like if you want to add those things, it's okay. And the way I look at it for myself personally is I make everything easy and simple, right? I don't stress over the smallest things. There are sauces out there that you can spend 20 bucks on and have the most perfect ingredients. And, and if you've got $20 to spend on a sauce, you go for it. I don't. So this is almost $4. That's enough for me, right? So what I do when I go to the grocery store is I look at my products. The first thing I look at is your carb counts. So I'm going to show you on this one. Most mayonnaise have zero carbs. So this is not a good. Let me, let me do this one. I look at my carb counts. I'm fixing to show you guys how to do this. But I look at this carb count and I'm like, huh, there's one total carb. That's pretty awesome. Uh, there's no fiber. So there's no sugar alcohol. So there's one carb. And there's one carb and two tablespoons of this. So I'm like, dang, two car. I mean, one carb and two tablespoons. So I could have, you know, quite a bit of this. And my carb count is going to be very small, right? If I, calc if I was really serious and, and strict... I can measure out two tablespoons, it would be one carb. That's pretty good. And then I'll look at the ingredients. And this is what I say about ingredients and the products you're choosing. There are perfect things out there, guys. There really are. You guys, I, you guys there, I think I almost lost you. Can you hear me? Give me some hearts if you can hear me. I don't want to keep going if my voice went away. Can you guys hear me? Give me some hearts if you can hear me. I hope you can. Yay, I saw a heart. Thank you. So what I do then next, after I look at my carb counts, is I look at the ingredients. If I can read the ingredients, it makes me feel good. <laughs> if they've got five or like a paragraph this thick and I'm like reading, I'm like, what's that? What's that? What's that? How do you say that? If I can't read it, that's a problem for me. So I will look at the next product and look at the ingredients and see if I can read it. So this is a really good mayonnaise I found. It's actually called Chosen Foods. I showed it in a video the other night. Chosen Foods. I got it at Walmart. One of my friends on here showed it to me. I cannot remember who. I'm so sorry. So sorry. But thank you so much. Everything you guys teach me on, I'm so thankful. And then I just share the wealth. I share the knowledge. So anything you find that I've overlooked or I haven't seen or you learned that I haven't learned yet or I haven't taught you, tell me. Teach me because I want to teach more people. So I'm going to turn my camera around so you can see this one. It's called Chosen Foods. This is the one I'm buying right now. Now, there are mayonnaise recipes out there. My friend Maggie has shared one with me. I just haven't tried it yet because I'm always so busy. So just making my own sometimes is just the, uh, it's the path of least resistance for me. It's just to buy a good one because I can come up with all the excuses. I just don't want to make, I just don't want to make the time. So again, in that, because I'm going to own up to it, I'm just lazy. I don't want to make my own. Sorry, Maggie, but I'm just lazy. And I'm going to admit it, I'm lazy sometimes. So in that fact, I want to buy the best product I can. So this one, the mayonnaise, of course, there's zero carbs. You should never see carbs in, in, in mayonnaise, never, because the ingredients don't have carbs. So let's read this ingredient. I've got avocado oil, filtered water, egg yolks, organic whole eggs, organic distilled white vinegar, organic mustard, uh, water, organic mustard seeds, salt, organic spices, salt, organic rosemary extract. I'm not big on organic, but this is what's in here. And eggs. I could read every single one of those things. So I'm like, oh, I have found the perfect mayonnaise. Like, I love this mayonnaise. It's perfect for me. So this is awesome. Now, you may love Duke's mayonnaise. And if you do, it's okay. Just read your ingredients. If you feel good about it, Go for it. Check your carb counts. So this one is a really good sauce. I love it. It's the famous clucking chicken sauce from G Hughes. And I love G Hughes, but it's not perfect. It's not perfect. When I look at it, it says it's got one carb, zero fiber, zero sugar alcohol. So one carb per two tablespoons is the serving size. I'm fixing to show you all how to look at this. We need to read the ingredients now. I've got water, canola, and soybean oil. Canola and soybean oil. No, hands down. It's got yellow mustard. It's got uh, turmeric, spices, vinegar, salted egg yolk, cider vinegar. Contains 2% or less. I like that. 2% or less of tomato paste, modified cornstarch, salt, spices, natri natural hickory smoke, lemon juice concentrate, onion powder, garlic powder, caramel color. Like I hate color, but that's what makes it pretty. At least it's that, not EDTA. And then we got exanthum gum, natural flavoring, paprika extract, sucralose, which is okay. Uh, potassium sorbate, of course, to keep it processed. I mean, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I'm so mad. And calcium disodium EDTA. I just learned about this EDTA and now I'm sickened by G Hughes. I'm not even gonna, y'all, it's delicious. 
It says it's less than 2%. Ugh, that, and it's for preservative. Ugh, this is why I like to teach clean eating as much as possible. Because as much as I love this, I will really think twice about opening this. Because EDTA, only because I've researched, is chemicals they use to clean dental equipment. Now, why in the world would they want to put that in here just to make the color pretty? That's exactly what it's for. It's preservative and color freshness. Um, this says it adds a trivial, trivial amount of sugar, which is why there's one carb and two tablespoons. I mean, it's not the best, guys. It, it's got soybean oil. It's got canola oil. It's got EDTA. Ugh, that frustrates me. But it is delicious, and the carb counts are low. So... What are your goals? This is what I tell everybody. I can tell you how I do it, but how are you going to do it? What are your goals? Like, are you trying to reach perfection? Are you just trying to get healthy? Are you trying to lose fat? This, lovely, wonderful. I could read it all. I didn't see any chemicals in it. This one is very low carb. Definitely not perfect. And there are perfection options out there. You just have to look for them if you want perfection. If not, then you can have a tablespoon of this, and it's not going to kill you. A tablespoon of this is not going to kill you. So, if you had this every single day, I would say, please, put it away. That's just me. So, that's kind of how I do it. So, I know that was a tangent. I'm sorry, Erica. That's a great question. Let me show y'all how to read those carb counts. So, I'm sorry. Forgot about that. So, this is the bottle. You'll see the serving size is two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. You've got one total carb, zero fiber, and there's no sugar alcohols. We're not looking for sugar. We're looking for sugar alcohols. So one carb, zero fiber, zero sugar alcohol. So that's one carb and two tablespoons. It looks pretty good, right? Until you read that. And I mean, I hate that too because I love G. Hughes. Like I bought this specifically because I love this stuff. It is delicious. Delicious. So again, it all depends on your goals. Two tablespoons of this is not going to kill me, but I would not have this every single day. And I don't know for sure if I'm going to open it. All right. Man, that makes me so upset. See, I'm teaching y'all stuff, and then I find something I didn't see before. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I, I, I try not to be judgmental on products, but, I mean, the whole point is to get healthy, right? I don't want chemicals that you clean dental equipment with in my food. just doesn't make sense. Denise had turkey meatballs with rice, cauliflower, and a mushroom asparagus. Ooh, that sounds so good. Thank you, Carolyn. Guys, I really appreciate you thinking about a little bit. Betty had eyelid surgery. Aw. Uh, Betty, I've got tons of simple recipes. Let me send you my recipe blog. Um, oh, no. Am I still froze? Did, so, y'all may not have heard any of that. And it's okay if you didn't because I wasn't very nice about G. Hughes. I love G. Hughes. I keep freezing. I don't know what happened. What kind of flavors in the mayonnaise still froze? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. You cannot even hear me, I don't think. So I'm getting hard. So I might be, you may be able to hear me. <laughs> Hopefully you're seeing a smile if I'm frozen. <laughs> Hopefully you're just seeing a smile and not my. <laughs> All right, guys. You have an awesome night. If I can help you with anything, make sure you reach out to me. I'm here to help you guys. I want to help you get started. I want to help you lose fat. I want to help you maintain. I want to help you with your questions and answers. Um, like I want to help you pick out healthy foods. I want to help you. That's what this page is for is just to help you guys. Uh-oh, Mona's getting her 10-day challenge tomorrow. So excited for you too, Mona. Let me know when you get it. I'm so excited. Um, but this page is here for you guys. So it helps me. Be accountable because you guys are my accountability partner and I love it because I need it. And then I love this page because I truly genuinely want to help each and every one of you that are ready to make some changes and like have the most awesome experience living a life, guys, that is full of energy, better sleep, better mood, less pain, less inflammation, like I'm so all about it. So I love, love, love this page. Thank you guys for following me. If I've ever been any help to you, please share this video and give me some hearts so Facebook can say, oh my gosh, people love her. Let me share her stuff because that's what I want to do. I want to keep growing this page so we can show more people how simple it is uh, to do these awesome things. Thank you guys for Little Bit's prayer. And there is still an unspoken prayer request. If you don't mind, I just can't talk about it. Uh, but all of your prayers are always welcome. 
for my family and for my little pups. So, all right, guys, I'm going to jump off here and clean this mess up. Y'all have an awesome night. Bye.